In a previous video, we start working on our new storage container. We got the container just before the winter break. Then we open some space around it and finally we build a big roof on top. Now it's time to start making the storage system. Welcome to a new project camp update. One side will be our new material bank to store afcats to be used later and items that could have a second life such as windows or doors. The other side will host our new waste system. We like the idea of not being ashamed of the waste we generate and since our project is based on sustainability we also like to put the waste in the front to in the future give a new value to what now is considered garbage. But first we need to do some landscaping work around the container and for that we will get a hand from the general help team. At the moment I'm in the area that we cleared up last season but unfortunately the brambles are already growing back. The idea is to bring in humans so that they step on the brambles and the brambles stay away. But to get the humans here, we need to make the place a bit more comfortable. So let's do that. We try to remove the base from the old mimosas and pull the new sprouting ones. Okay, here we are trying a new strategy, putting the tops of the mimosa on the bottom to create like a barrier that gets the rainwater and retains it into the ground. So all this soil that I'm standing on, we got from the leveling the container, which we can now use to put on top of the mimosa tops. Top, 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 top. Here we have a muttering item and we don't want people to step on it so we are going to put this little sign here. It's so beautiful. It is beautiful. We also always try to take care of the native species we find around. So here next to the Madroño, we have a nice open area. We would like to create this as a general help space. So some chairs, a table and a flat leveled area could help. Okay, one, three. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> the art. Thank you. Maybe we should bring our new board in. Oh yeah, that's nice. It's not strong enough. So, Ale, you? you take care of the cameras today? No, not today, no. Alright. Uh, today is, is Marily. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Then we cleared a circular area to be the new human hour space. And in our journey to find useful uses to the mimosas, this big bench was built. It's a good two-seater. We should have a little tablet with tea and coffee here.
to connect all these new places, we made multiple paths with the wood chips. Come on, people, work, work. Stop you, talking. Uh, what are you doing sitting there in the stairs? You work. Yeah. To finish the job, we had to cut this mimosa that was almost falling in the new roof. I mean, better than nothing. Yeah, it should be okay. <laughs> oh. Now, the roof is safe. Okay, so the area has been transforming quite a bit. Let's have a look. So in the area we have been taking down quite a bit more of Mimosa. It's never bad to take out more, but then what do we do with all that material? We chopped it this time up in smaller pieces and lay it down on the water lines. This to stop the water from sliding down, but also help to decompose it faster. And with this little bridge it becomes quite funny. And obviously, the native ones, they are highly cared. We also got the opportunity to create more neat meeting spaces. In this case, a new space for general help to have their Monday morning meeting. So here we have a beautiful creation made out of Mimosa. You can have a look on the research module. And this shapes the new human hour space, where we come together by the end of the week. So enough about this area. General help did a great job, but we're going now towards the container. <laughs> we're going to start to build our material bank. We have the roof ready, so we have a nice dry area around the container to start to store our materials. In this first material bank, we will store mainly wood in different sizes. Now we try to standardize a bit the sizes of the wood we use in the camp in order to, in the future, be able to disassemble what we do, to reuse that wood and like that, expanding the life of the materials. And for this project, we have Emily that will take care of the design, the building and the assembly of the project. If you want. I can. Cool. First I digged a trench so we can have electricity in the container. The power we use in the camp comes from the solar panels and is stored in batteries in the kitchen container. Like that, we have another building connected to our off-grid system.
So I'm gonna start building the shelves that will make our storage system. We wanted to design something that is strong with common materials and be easily replicated by others. It will consist of metal rails attached to the container wall that will hold some arms. It will be adjustable so it can be adapted to many different needs and materials to store. I will start by doing the first piece to see if everything works. I was so nervous about the welding part so I forgot to film it but it seems to be fine. Here is the result. First done, now we need to do this uh, 24, let's go actually 23 because we have one. Now I have all the pieces so I can start welding, it will be a lot of welding, but I got new claws so I should be good to go. And also red jacket, red and blue, good match. And the welding machine, it happens to be a Finnish brand, so even nicer. Now all the arms are ready, the next day can be sanded and painted, but first I need to work on with the U-beams, first by cutting them and then do a bunch of grilling. Uh -huh. There is the U-beams.
So, um, this is how it goes. The arm goes inside of the U-beam and then there is a true hole and a bolt that holds everything together. Next, we do a lot of holes. Okay, now I got all the U-beams drilled, only thing is to drill the placement or the true bolt for the where you attach it to the container. It goes each end, one and maybe one in the middle, I'm not sure yet. Now I'm gonna mark the places. Done. Okay, arms are ready to be painted next, but I think somebody will help me with the painting. Just, uh, can you help me with the painting? Can you? No. Timo, you want to do a little bit sanding? Um, I have to go shopping, I'm oh. sorry. Oh. I would love to otherwise. They are my helpful people. We sanded and painted everything to prevent rust. I could use this shot to say that we used 40 by 40 by 3 mm U-beams. They have good strength for our need. Now that all pieces are made, we can start assembling. Uh, the container is not perfectly straight, so we need to hit uh, some of the pumps back to make it more even. Okay, so you think there is no other solution? Um, no, so it's a uh, hammer time. Mm. No? You're going inside. Yes. Get it. Without this one, it's awful. What's happening here? But it's pretty cool. Go inside. What's happening here? 
You can crazy, kill everything. Emma. Don't show yourself. What are you doing? This is a sound test. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Very cold. You see, there you were, you hit with the hammer, it's hotter. Makes sense. It's fun to see. Okay, wait a minute. Here I have a new thermal camera that we are trying. But maybe Dave can talk more about it. So we got this thermal cam made by Topton and they sent it to us so we could try and showcase the features it has. And this thing gives a high resolution infrared image on your phone screen and it shows the temperature readings. You can tap on the image to get a point temperature info and you have this mode where you can draw a line on the screen and it gives you the highest and the lowest temperature points on that line. And you can also draw an area and this will give you the hottest and the coldest points in there. It has a wide range of temperature measurements from minus 20 to 500 degrees and different settings to tailor the scale you're working with and the colors and so on. We wanted to figure out what we could use it for and we found a bunch of applications in Project Camp. First, let's have a look at our cork insulation in the office. We found out some heat is leaking between the seams of the cork boards. You can see the yellow lines more bright, which means it's hotter. We also had a quick check on our solar system. Good to see if some components overheat and therefore improve the layout of it. Batteries are doing great, no overheating. Another cool application is also to see if the compost pile is working. You can tell if it's hot enough inside there. Looks like it is, so no need to get our hands dirty. And as we're renovating old buildings, it's an interesting tool to see where the structure is weaker. For instance, those corners between the ceiling and the wall get hotter, probably means there's less material, so we might need to reinforce those areas. And we couldn't avoid checking our recycled plastic roof. It's interesting to see the difference in temperature between the sheets, probably because each panel has a different plastic mix and color. So we did a few quick tests with the camera. It seems like a useful tool. And I can think of many other applications. So one cool thing is you can also hook it up to your computer so then you can monitor over time the temperature. Um, would also be interesting to measure wildlife and uh, maybe even at night that you can see the heat patterns they leave. Or maybe we can spot wildfires in the distance. Or I was also thinking what if you have like different colors of paint and we can measure which one gets most hot so we can see what color we should paint our buildings. What I also like is that it's uh, like not an entire new device, but it's an add-on. It's a bit like phone blocks, like a module for your existing phone. Anyway, we'll continue to explore more information in the link below and let's continue with the container. Pretty good. Not bad, not bad. Now the container is flat, let's install the system. After the first one was in place, I did the same thing for the five other pins, but I forgot to record it, so sorry. <laughs> Actually, it took me a whole day to mount the six pins to, to the container, since the container was so uneven. So it was a little bit more work than I was expecting, but now it seems to be okay. It kind of moves. Can you see it? But, yeah, not bad. So I need to add a, add a bolt to the middle. Now just have to put the arms in. Good morning. How it looks? Uh, good. How do you feel about it? Mm, not bad. 
Not bad. Good beavers, I think. Well, always can be worse. Can I? Can yeah, I? it's all fast. Yeah? Is it strong enough for me? I think so. I'm heavy, yeah? Whoa, very strong. Now I got the arms here. Looks nice. Only thing left to do is to bring all the wood here, but I need a few more hands for that, so uh, let's go and see if there is any hands available. Okay, this is all the wood that we need to move, and there seems to be happy people willing to help me. So, this wood needs to go there. Yes. And so it's harder or just <laughs> <laughs> on the beam side? One small beam for the persons, one big step for growing cattle. Okay, one side is ready with our material bank, and now we are going to jump into the other side. We are going to set up our first waste point. Emily is going to build it. We'll have a similar structure than the other side. And for this, we have Kevin that will start a research to see the state where we are at to be able to set up our first waste system. Currently, we are using this uh, recycling system. We have a free color bin, which is based on the uh, waste system that apply in the whole Portugal. The glass and paper are fairly understandable and very clear but there's a problem with the yellow one, which uh, makes a lot of different packaging material into one bin. For example, there are tetra bag, plastic bag, and hard plastic, and all kinds of metal uh, mixed into one bin. So it's difficult for people to understand and do it properly. So we want to do a more detailed segregation on the yellow bin, and we have done some testing. So uh, let me show you. Okay. Okay, so this is what we have now. You can see a lot of different material mixed together with barbed wire, metal, this dangerous stuff are all together here and it's very messy. Either you come to recycle or you want to rescue some of the material for your project. So I think we can do better than this. Let me show you. Okay, so this is where Emily will be building the new recycling system shelving and we want to segregate all kinds of material into more tidy rack so people can recover the material more easily and also separate them more easily and it's also very easy to load it onto a truck and send it to a recycling point and but to decide that we also have been doing a waste audit to count what kind of waste we're actually producing so i can show you that as well Robert, you can do this one, yep. like the same time, together. So we have stockpiling all the recyclable and separate them into a clear system and to see what kind of material we actually got. Like, for example, there's a lot of metal, coffee bags and tetra bag and also a lot of plastic bags so these are material potentially we can use uh, reuse locally here for our future project 
or we can stockpiling more enough to find a trustable recycler to send it directly to them. In case anyone is wondering why we only have the bottom and the top can, uh, of the part of the can, it's because we have been using the size uh, for another project. So, we want to make some sign for the recycling system, but the sign will be placed outdoors, so we need it to be weatherproof. Let's see if we can make a sign out of it. Now the piece of wood is covered with the aluminum from the beer can, so now we try to write the sign on it. So this is how it will be look like and I'm quite happy about it. So let's make three more of them. So we have made this sign. Let's put this onto the crate. grams. So after the audit, we decided to keep the glass and paper bin because it's uh, more or less a more straightforward uh, separation. And for the yellow bin, we want to do a more detailed one, which is uh, four category. One is a precious plastic where we keep the PP and PE uh, for the future project. And then the soft plastic mainly uh, the plastic bag, the cheap bag, and uh, the tetra pack where we can compress and save space also maybe for future project. And hard plastic is the really mixed plastic that we have no idea what to use, but still we want to put it into a tidy way. And metal is the more valuable one. We separate them into aluminum and mixed it metal. We would be stockpile them into a more bigger quantity. Either we send it to a trust for a recycler or we can reuse them locally here. We will keep doing research and how, uh, see how it goes and it will evolve and uh, depends how it goes, we will keep re improving it. This is our first version of the recycling system. Uh, all the bins are ready. When the shelf is done, we can start installing them. So here are some vents or some reverse made to the container. So there is a belt seam that needs to be grinded down.
this is good example what the video makers actually do. They just vandalize all the all the things we have. So now the beams are there, so I can put the arms on. By the way, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Arms are all in place, now it's time to make some wood support. Now I'm in. Now I need to make uh, three more shelves, two more shelves, so three in total. It's loud in here. The fact that uh, this place feels uh, quiet and silence and everything is in balance in reality, it's almost all of the days very noisy. They just don't show it to you. Flexing uh, quite a lot, so I want to add one of, one more arm to the middle. Better. I broke it already. Also bird for naps. Just some hours after we finished, it started to rain, so we could put our storage system to the test. Are you dry? I think it worked good, but let's see, time will tell. This is the system that we created. So it consists of six beams and six beams on each side. So same system on both sides of the container. Seven holes and into those holes you can put the arms. And you mount the arm by putting the bolt through. The beams are bolted uh, straight to the container. So we wanted to make a system that is simple enough to make here 
and maybe simple enough to replicate also. And the material that we used, it's uh, standard sizes, so it should be available everywhere where you can get metal. So this is the waste site or the storage site or whatever. We put the windows here from the white tent and also on top we uh, put some things that we don't need that often. Also some cacao, gas, beer, some crates that uh, Timo is taking in and out quite often. The waste site and also the spiky wire. At some point we probably will add some more shelves here because we just have a lot of stuff and this is good and dry place to store stuff so it's good to have a system that is uh, changeable. The material bank is a nice upgrade because we can start stocking ahead of time for our projects. So that will reduce delays and most importantly we can start storing properly many materials we want to reuse. And for the waste system we are still in early stages of our research. But enough improvement for the moment. Now it's easier to load and unload the bins. We can align better with the local recycling facilities and even think better of how to reuse and upcycle. In the next update, we will continue clearing the mimosas around base camp to improve our fire resilience. We will do some testing and a bit of research. Now that the outside of the container is ready, we also have created this area around where we can sit, chill or just enjoy the shade. If you like what we do, you can support us in Patreon. You can see the videos one week ahead and without ads and that would be very helpful for us. Otherwise, you can always subscribe, comment to help us with the algorithm. Thank you for watching and see you in the next update.